Well, listen, um, guys, um, everybody out there in the social media world, um, I'm Pastor Maxwell at Victory Christian Center, and uh, I'm here with two wonderful pastors from Georgia. Lord knows we're praying for Georgia today. I saw y'all <laughs> government talking, so Lord knows we're praying for y'all today. <laughs> we appreciate uh, it. Yeah. But I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves and uh, tell you where they're from and the church they pastor, and uh, I'll come back on and kind of tell y'all what we're doing today and uh, kind of how... Um, what God has led us to share. Hey, I'm Dominique Johnson, I'm, uh, the pastor of Kingdom Life in Macon, Georgia. My name is Paul Little, I pastor Bib, Mount Zion, also in Macon, Georgia. Well, cool, well, these are two great men of God, and um, again, I'm Pastor Max, we're here in Lake Butler, Florida, at Victory Christian Center, and one of the things I had felt led to do, I contacted um, Pastor Little on yesterday, um, or actually earlier this week, and um, felt led to kind of um, create a platform to hopefully encourage pastors and encourage um, leaders around the nation, um, because if there's anybody, of course, that's kind of stressing out during this time, um, is pastors and leaders that's in the church community. And I wanted them to maybe share a little bit of how um, they're encouraging their members and how they're staying sane and staying encouraged themselves. And, um, and hopefully um, be an encouragement to all the pastors and leaders that will connect with us during this time and watch um, this stream. So listen, if you're watching this, I wanna encourage you to share this with um, every pastor, every leader you know, um, and pray, and we're praying that this will be a time of edification for every leader that's out there. So, um, and feel free, um, Feel free if you guys want to ask any questions, those who's watching. Um, if you want to ask any questions, we'll try to do our best um, to try to chime in and answer any questions that you guys might have and um, during this time. So let me kind of ask you guys real quick, um, um, Pastor Dominique and Pastor Paul, let me ask you guys um, kind of what are some of the things that you guys are doing for yourself to keep yourself sane and keep yourself encouraged during this time? What are some of the kind of things that you're doing during this whole pandemic? You want to go, Paul? You go ahead. All right. So I think, uh, well, no, I think some of the things I'm doing, uh, I'm definitely, I'm doing what you call like a both and. What I mean by that, I am trying to use time wisely. You know, we learned that in kindergarten. Right. And so I am definitely being focused on work. But I'm also being focused on relaxing. Right. So I'm also using the time to shut down my brain at times and just enjoy the moment with my family or just outside. I think I sat outside the other day, man, probably for like two, three hours. I mean, I was listening to stuff. I cut, I cut it off. So really, I'm just doing, I'm doing, you know, a whole, I'm, I'm focusing holistically. Right. So I want to come out of this with some things produced and some change in my own heart. Right. But I also want to take the time to rest. Right. Right. Yeah. I got you. Got you. What about you, Pastor Lit? Yeah, man. Uh, likewise, uh, I am, um, you know, spending some very valuable time in prayer and, and meditation, um, going through a devotional through uh, the book of Psalms and um, staying on top of, you know, the mental health aspect of it. Um, get a lot of exercise in, of course, reading. And, um, and as Pastor Johnson said, you know, I'm maximizing this time with my wife. Um, we don't have any biological kids in the house. So, you know, we're taking advantage of this time, you know, just watching movies on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, just enjoying ourselves, man, sitting outside, hanging out. Uh, we've done a lot in terms of, um, you know, just playing games and, and just, you know, connecting, uh, you know, on a deeper level. And so, I, I do think, as uh, Pastor Johnson said, we want to make sure that this time is productive, but also let's use it for some rest and some relaxation. Right. Um, I think at the end of all of this, it would be great if we all have something that we could say uh, we produced during this time. Uh, yeah. With the help of the Lord, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm writing a book during this time. I know Dominique is doing some writing. And so, um, but also let's not forget that this is a good downtime for us. So I think it's about prioritizing that piece so that we can make sure that we do get some necessary rest as well. 
Yeah, and you know, I saw that you posted that the other day about this is a good time to maximize and, and, and maybe write a book. You know, maybe this is God's strategic plan of kind of just bringing us aside um, so that we can have some time to concentrate on him as leaders and, and like you say, rest and relax and refresh and, and maybe even take advantage to use this time to put some of our writing into play. So uh, most of us, I'm sure most of the pastors I know has, has been dreaming about writing a book. And uh, <laughs> what better time to be able to do it than now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think that is so critical. I think the other aspect of this is that we also recognize that for those of us who are pastoring, that you know, contrary to a lot of people's popular belief, uh, this is not a vacation for us at all. No, uh, not at all. We're having to live stream and put in some innovative methods. I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. But I know, it, man, it's it's work, and for many of us, it's it's working overtime because we have to really think more strategically and tactically through some of the things that we're doing now. So uh, it's definitely not a vacation, but I do think that we can maximize that time for rest if we manage our time well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me ask you guys, and I think you're right on it, Lit, is, you know, I, I kind of thought that this would be a time where it wouldn't be as much hard work, but like you say, it seems like it's just as much work doing this right? Um, versus just having what we would call, quote unquote, normal church. Because like you say, we have to be very strategic with connecting with our people through social media, the other means that we're able to connect with them. Um, I mean, what, what have y'all seen out of that, just the work that it's taken to do ministry right now? I, I think for me, it's called me definitely to I mean, I, I think anyway a lot. Mm -hmm. but it's literally, it literally is bringing me to a place of really stretching me. Mm -hmm. But during that time, because I do know we want to, like you say, do we better? Like, like we all have said, it's definitely not a vacation for us, right? Right. But I do want to make sure that we still take that time to, hey, get up and walk away from it. Right. Because I think in that matter, too, that's where a lot of creativity is, is birth. Right, like for right. me, one of the things I try to do uh, is work in 50-minute increments. Okay. And so something, something I teach people, even when I do leadership development for companies or CEOs, I talk about TOT, T-O-T, time on task. Okay. So I think during this time, is I'm able to focus on the task, to be creative, and then at the end of the day, walk away for 10, 15 minutes, laugh, play, come back, and then – get back in it for another. Some people say 25. I try to do at least 40, 45. But I think I've seen the stuff I've seen come out of that to get to your point of your question, Pat, is, man, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of, like, creative stuff. I've seen more people giving encouraging words. You know, uh, I, I, laughter has come out of it for some people. You know, just the, the bit idea that you're getting outside of yourself and you're thinking of these creative ways of how to do do certain, and let me tell you something on a on a working tip though is also making sure that you're content strong. Okay. Because, because for some of us like that crowd feedback or interaction, and nothing is wrong with that. I'm I'm definitely not critiquing anyone's style, but this is definitely a time to make sure that your content, your humble new, your humble all that stuff is showing up right. So I think you'll probably see deeper deeper content. I think you'll probably see deeper content that, that comes out of it, more imagination and depth in, in our preaching as well. Yeah, I think you're right on it. I think, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day, another preacher, and we talked about how it's going to be hard to survive during this time, even in this short span of time, whether it's two, three, or four months, or even five or six, like some are even projecting, if we don't have content, because preaching to empty chairs and just to a camera, we don't have the luxury of having the feedback from that deacon in the corner, that, <laughs> miss, that missionary that's sitting out there, you know, that shouting John person out there. I mean, you don't have that. I mean, I, I, I don't know about y'all. It, it was very eerie the first time the other week when I was preaching and I felt like I had a point that just like, it was right on it, man. And, I guess subconsciously I was waiting for a response and it was nothing there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. the folk that was back in the in the back working on the media and working on the sound, 
they ain't even say amen. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so when you just got four or five people in the church, if you ain't got content, you know, it's you. It's gonna be hard to survive, man. Yeah, man. it was funny during that time. Like I said, a couple of things, but I consider good points, and they told me later, and they was like. We didn't know whether we could say amen or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think I think it's uh, real uh, significant this whole piece about content and not being able to, you know, from a preaching standpoint, uh, as as Pastor Johnson said, not trying to, you know, critique anybody's style. Right. We, we, you're not going to be able to hype your way through a lot of this. You yeah. know. Uh, yeah. You know, won't he do it? Ain't gonna ain't gonna make oh, it right now. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna have to have some depth. Uh, and some substance, which we should, should all the time, right. but especially now with us literally having the world's attention and and God allowing us to have this technological platform, people are looking for hope, people are looking for inspiration, they're looking for answers, and uh, and they're looking to us as spiritual leaders to be the ones to help to uh, set the trajectory of where we're going to go as a church and as a people and as a community. So uh, I agree, man. Content, uh, creativity, and innovation. Uh, that piece that was said earlier about making sure we walk away from it so that we don't get overly consumed. Right. We're trying to, you know, do all of these innovative things because, you know, we do know that creativity is birthed out of rest and recreation as well. And right. so I concur, man, with everything that's being said. I think we really want to make sure that we encourage one another as well. Yeah. Uh, as pastors and, and glean from one another, right? Right. You know, iron, iron sharpens iron. So I think this is a great time. I'm seeing so many pastors you know, collaborate. I'm talking to guys on a regular basis, you know, even from a national standpoint, people from all over the country right. are able to swap ideas and share about our different contexts. And I think that even after this crisis, we need to think of ways to continue this and not let this, you know, momentum die. Right. You you say something, and both of you guys are saying something that's right on point about, um, you know, collaborating with each other, because I think all of us can see that the, the, the playing field has been leveled now. Right. You know, nobody ain't got a big church right now. Right. You know, I mean, everybody is, is, is a small, it's a small church for everybody. And if there's anything we need to do is work together and collaborate and synergize. Um, and maybe this is, maybe this is a part of God's way of getting us to work together. You know, I've said for years, I think in the last days is, is going to be kind of like what we've seen in Ezekiel 37 bone come to his bone that that the body of mm. christ is going to come together and maybe this is a part of that you know i'm, I'm not an end time prophet or whatever but maybe this is god's way of pulling us together um because i think we all know there's anybody that's hard to get together is the church and um, sometimes when you have common pain and you have common issues for some reason uh, we can look beyond our differences and collaborate and synergize um, and so I think that's really good. Uh, yeah, you know, when I was, uh, it's interesting you said that. Uh, one of the things that they, they, they said when I was when I was pledging, right? Uh -huh. One of the things they said, like a common a common struggle creates a common bond, right? And so, right. and during this time, it's definitely not the time to be a lone ranger. It's not. You know? It's not. Um, even if you have a large group of ministry friends, a small group of ministry friends, and I want I want to make this even just all about. Um, many of us supposed to be, I know this we're about encouraging pastors, but I want to encourage anybody who are, who is in a, a marketplace ministry at the moment, like talk to other entrepreneurs at the moment, you know, right. talk to other people, at least bounce ideas, you know, this may be, it may be the idea of a lot of think tanks, uh, right. uh, investment groups that are born. I mean, it, 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 this is not the time to go strictly just solo. Right. It, this definitely is not the time to do that. It may be new friendships birth. I know for those who are introverts, which I don't know if any of you, I don't think you, my two brothers here are. No. Uh, no matter how introverted you are, I think it's still good to have somebody to connect with during this time. So that, that's a good, that was a good point too, Pat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right on it, man. Um, let me ask you guys just what, what are some creative things you guys are do, doing to connect with your church. I know there's Facebook, um, text messaging. Is, is there any other, you know, because one of the things I think is good for us to share ideas. Um, what, what things are you guys doing to connect with your members? Go ahead, Pete. 
So uh, <clears throat> for us right now, the, the key word is engagement. Okay. Um, how do we engage people? How do we connect with them on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. So we're utilizing, uh, obviously, social media. Um, we have a pretty strong online family, online audience, so we try to glean uh, you know, different ways that we can connect with people on social media. Um, we have a, a mobile app where we can send people for live streaming uh, as well as mobile giving. They can look at, you know, uh, sermon content notes on there as well. Okay. Um, YouTube live, uh, Instagram. We're using literally all of those platforms to drive people to the content that we believe is going to really keep people focused and keep people you know, in a place of peace and encouragement during this time. Right. We also have a mass text messaging uh, system where we can send out uh, corporate text messages. Uh, corporate email is through Constant Contact. That's a very big one for us as well. Okay. Okay. And then also uh, like a robocall, which reaches a lot of our senior population. Okay. So we, we're using all of those different platforms um, on a weekly basis. We want to make sure that people hear from their pastor and hear from their leaders. Uh, additionally, our ministers and our deacons and deaconess are helping to call members, you okay. know, just do cold calling during the week and just seeing if there's some specific needs. And so people can literally text in a keyword to our ministry mobile number okay. to let us know if they have some physical needs. And then our, our ministers, our deacons and deaconess, can respond accordingly. So for us, the key word is engagement. How do we keep people connected uh, in the midst of all of this social distancing, uh, you know, the social distancing regulations? Right, right. That's great. That's great. What about you, Nick? Well, um, we're doing the same things that Paul are doing. I think they're ahead of the game. That's Mr. Innovate, and I salute him for that. But one of the things that we're doing um, that I can add in outside of that is that I was I was really happy to show where the teaching came in at my community. We actually have a prayer line that has started within our church as well. Okay. We didn't necessarily have that before. Uh, now we, we believe in prayer. So we had like time for intercessory prayer here at the church. Okay. And so what has happened is we have a, a daily prayer line that has started that is led by different people at the church, not even me, uh, uh, you know, well, a couple of my, probably one or two of my ministers, but our people grab hold of that. So that's one way they're keeping in. And so it's led by, but we also open it up during that time for other people to lead who may not necessarily have a time to pray or anything like that. But okay. I'm going to start doing, we have um, a, 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 a system that we just purchased a whatnot called Pastor's Line, and what I'm going to start doing on Monday, uh, probably before then, sometime, my, my wife say even when I come to do it, I always wait till Monday, like, <laughs> dude, wait or something, right? But uh, uh, I'm going to start pr probably doing like a um, a voice recording. Okay. And actually send it to our media team and let them upload it, okay. and then to do like policy, the robocall, so to speak, to everybody. Okay. Other than that, we have some of the same tools. We we send out the mass stuff. We encourage. We I'm encouraging other people to host also their own Zoom get-togethers and parties. Okay. You know, okay. I don't think it's the time also for us to as a, as I'm encouraging pastors. We can't have this fear that other little churches don't start out. You gotta right, let your people right. talk to people. Right. And if it does, it, it is what it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that those are some of the things that we are doing. We're encouraging them. I hit my leadership team. I try to hit my leadership team daily and letting right. them know, hey, what's up? I'm just checking in. Uh try to make some personal calls myself. So those are some of the things I am doing. But I'm encouraging the the body right. of believers. Right to check on each other as well. Right, right. I got you. I got you. You know, one of the things that makes all of this tough, you know, because I don't know about y'all, I had never heard the term of social distancing till a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Right? I know, right? <laughs> I had never heard of it. And one of the things is that's unique about social distancing is that Christianity was not created to be something that's operated at a distance. Yeah. You know, when you look in the scripture, there's so many verses that has the word together in it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, from old magnify the Lord, let us exalt his name together, you know, um, assembling together. And, and all of these verses that deal with together, you know, Christianity was not designed to be something Sorry about that, um, uh, alone. And so what we're having to do, all of us are having to do is to figure out ways and how to maneuver 
um, and connect our people when we are told not to be connected. Right. <laughs> you know, um, Christianity, you know, I told my wife, Christianity was not designed to be something that's two dimensional. It was designed to be something that's four dimensional, where, where you actually in the presence of other people. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I kind of joke with my wife. I, I posted on social media this morning. I said, uh, I was watching Star Wars last night. Y'all know how in Star Wars they have the holograms. You yeah. know, when people come up. I say, somebody need to come up with a hologram or something. We could just pop up in the living rooms of our members. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that started an interesting conversation, though, because my wife said, can you imagine if you just popped up unannounced in some of our folks' houses? Oh, man. <laughs> Not now, Pastor. This ain't a good time. Not right now, Reverend. Not right now. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know if I want you to pop up in mine. You know, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 <laughs> so, hey, the thing is, the thing is, I wonder how many people have done like these Zoom meetings with jobs and everything. Yeah. And they look good up top, but below, but they got on boxers and, <laughs> and shorts. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You know, I, I almost did Bible study last night with shorts on. I was going to tell the media, hey, just, just crop me from this waist up. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't feel like I'm putting on pants today, man. So, but yeah, we're, we're having to be creative. You know, we, of course, using Facebook. We, done, we created a Facebook group for just about every ministry in our church, praise and worship, ministers. I mean, you name it. And even I created a, a we, we created a Facebook group really for all of our members where I can share more sensitive stuff with them okay. yeah. uh, from giving um, to, I mean, you name it. And it's a private group. Um, it's, it's, it's not a group where everybody can see the stuff. They can't even search it and find it. So, uh, and I, and I try to do a video every day or every other day where I'm just encouraging them um, and, and things of that nature. Um, so I do that. We do text messaging. And just with us living in a, in a small community, we see each other still in the grocery store. We only got one grocery store in Lake Butler. So mm. I run into my members at the grocery store and other places. So, uh, but yeah, I think like you guys say, we just got to be creative. You know, I love the robocall thing. I'm going to do that, man, recording my voice, sending that out. Because there's an older population in my church like y'all's. Some of them, I don't care if you give them a million dollars, they ain't going to get on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that Jesus could be telling them he gonna be preaching on Facebook tonight <laughs> and they ain't gonna get on there they just ain't gonna start a Facebook I think some of them are just afraid they're gonna run into old flames or something on Facebook and they ain't ready for that so uh, but um, yeah I, I just yeah. I, I, yeah I think we have to use even some of those older school methods man so uh Real quick, hey, let, me, let me ask you a question yeah, real ahead. quick, Pastor, if you don't mind, so go to go in that dialogue. And we know that um, uh, we all study this, you know, Paul studies, you you studied about the early adapters, mid and late adapters. What, what would y'all suggest to pastors coming out of this? And, and we can't force a twist on by the arm, but what method or what would be your message to, to our saints? Because it, it could be even some... It, of course, the older saints, but even those, I think most of us on here are probably uh, Gen X. Some Gen Xers may be like that. Yeah. So, what, what you think, I know what I would say, but I want to hear from y'all. Like, what are, you, what are your message to people? Like, look, y'all, you got to try to adapt. Or, uh, you know, yeah. you don't want to be old school holders like I grew up. Adapt and get left behind. Now. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but, but what, 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 uh, Lit, what, you, what, go, what, Lit, you oh. jump on that, man. You jump on that, Lit. Yeah, I think it's a critical question right now. I think we really want to encourage, you know, people to understand that this particular crisis is exposing um, a lot of, you know, inconsistencies in terms of uh, technology and, and just different things that we've put on the back burner for so many years. Um, you know, when you start thinking about where technology is headed, there, there's going to be a time where you can only pay bills online. Yeah. You know, and so our older members, I think we have to use this as an opportunity to teach them different things about technology, even if it's the basics. They may not be on social media daily or regularly like many of us, but to, le to at least know the basics. Uh, my dad, uh, who's almost in his 70s, uh, just started a Facebook page last week because his pastor is doing his messages on Facebook. Yeah. And, and he's one of those people who was 
I would never do that because that's not his thing. Right. He's having to learn a new skill. I think it's important that we teach people to, that, that it's okay to learn a new skill. Right. And, yeah. and maximizing technology is a new skill for people. And, yeah. and it's okay. It's not demonic. It's not, it's not ungodly. It is literally a tool and a resource that the Lord is giving us because think about it. Without any of these resources, all of us will be disconnected right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think we have to use yeah. it as an opportunity to teach people that it's okay to learn a new skill, and if we don't adapt, ultimately we're gonna we're gonna die. Yeah, yeah. And and I saw that. I saw I saw a picture you took with your dad. What was his birthday? Right. And I, and I saw that his name was was highlighted. So I said, well, man, he must be on Facebook. Yeah, man. Which is cool, man. And, and, and yeah, I mean, that's on it. I almost had a heart attack the other day because my mother-in-law, there's two people always say, if these people get a Facebook, I'm going to fall out and die. My <laughs> mother-in-law <laughs> sent me a friend request. Oh, she was man. almost 70 years old. I looked at my wife. I said, oh, Lord, Jesus is really about to come back. <laughs> and, then my, my, and then my grandmother, who is 81 uh, I think she's 81 years old. Wow. Sent me a, fr a friend request. I said, Lord <laughs> Jesus, what is going on? The Lord is coming back tomorrow. He's coming back for real. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, I think I think we have to adapt, you know. And again, I live in a smaller community and, and I hate it. I feel bad for, for ministries that's not prepared. Uh, yeah. Because our church is, for us, predominantly black church, is I think probably only predominantly black church in our community that's streaming. Mm. Wow. Okay. So um, I think maybe a couple other churches probably are uh, predominantly black church are, are doing something unique, a little different, but for it's on the mainstream social media, uh, they're not doing it. And that's why I felt led the other week to kind of make a video and, you know, say, Hey, if any of y'all want to use it of our equipment, we've been blessed you know, for years with great equipment. And if any of y'all, I said to the local pastor, if y'all want to come and use our equipment, you're more than welcome. Um, didn't really get, you know, much traction on that. Uh, but I at least want to make the offer because I just know a lot of them just don't have it. Right. Uh, I mean, and I was also thinking, I mean, y'all tell me this, man. I was thinking, let, imagine, and neat, imagine if this would have hit 20 years ago. Ooh. I mean, Ooh. imagine if this would have hit 20 years ago. I mean, we didn't, 20 years ago, we didn't have no way of giving electronically. Right. We didn't have no Facebook Live. Yeah, no smartphones. No smartphones. Yeah. If this would have hit 20 years ago, and that's why it, you, you think about the planning and the timing of God, it would have destroyed the church. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we had 20 years ago. We were just coming out of pages, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pages and stuff, man. Hey, be, you be, be, be. hey, yeah, tell everybody just get the text message, the text page you can text, and text the whole sermon to them. Man, <laughs> I mean, just just imagine 20 years ago if the coronavirus would have hit the church. Wow. You know, with, with the mortgages and the stuff we got to pay for and yeah. connecting with our, our members and getting the message out. We wouldn't have survived, man. Well, that was like, 2000? Yeah. 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 Hey, so, something that I try to do, and I had to, I had to re renew my mind as well. Um, I take logo software, for instance, right? Right. Logo software. I'm a traditionalist when it comes to reading. Like, I, I, I want a book in my hand. But, and I think about it this I've, I've gone to ebooks more. I still buy a hard copy book. But when you think about it, Let's just use logos for it and so we're talking about adapting and moving forward. Like, think about now when we travel, if mm -hmm. I got logos or Paul uh, introduced me to Olive Tree, which I have on my iPad, right? we would literally have to sit and that would make our travel decision harder because we have to sit there and decide which book we're going to take, which yeah. I still take my e-books and the in a book, right? Yeah. We have to decide what books, what commentary, particularly those who do revivals or whatever. But think about it now: when you when you have logos, you can take in like a thousand books with you. Yeah. And so that's the one that I had to tell my mind, like Dominic. You know, they did start out writing on a wall. Right. Right. It went from a wall to a right. scroll. Right. Right. It went from a scroll to a to a bound book. Yeah. Site information, and now it probably I've been talking to him probably about two months. Like I said, he. 
he a, a he a I might be a mid adapter. Most people say I'm very. I think I'm kind of mid. He's you. into the audio. Like he'll read, he'll he'll listen to an audio, and I'm still kind of like, you know what, bro? I just I get into it. But yeah. you think about that. So we, I think that's one of the things we can also tell people. Like, look, what you, how you communicate, how you're reading books now. Right. That's changed. Right. That's you changed. know, and I think we, if we help them see incrementally how stuff has changed, they accepted it. Like, no, we know, as you said earlier, we know that um, uh, the Christian faith, a uh, uh, kingdom living is very communal. Right. But at this moment, this is stretching us to grow in a different level. And I think, that, yeah, that, so that that's good. But you were right. If, if this happened 20 years ago, ooh, woo. Yeah, I think I think uh, that that would have been detrimental. Uh, you know, again, like Pat said, man, God's timing and him. Uh, you know, as I said last night to our church, I don't believe that he necessarily sent the virus. I do believe that he's using the virus, right, in his sovereignty. Uh, you know, I think the other part of what Dominique just said just really, you know, uh, made me think of something. You know, from an African American perspective, our people throughout. You know our our legacy. We've been known for being creative in the midst of crisis, right? And, and I think we gotta, in some regards, say back to our older people that it's not new for us to adapt with different things. I mean, the fact that we're here in America is is an, is a, a testament that we know how to adapt, <laughs> right? Right. Exactly. You, know you, know what what you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the fact that we know how to cook chitlins and and and, yeah. fat pack and all that kind of stuff. Come on, you know, we, we've always come through. Uh, crisis and knowing how to stick together and how to be creative and how to be innovative. Right. Just now that the, the emphasis is more on a technological adaptation. Right. I think that's what's hard for some people, but, but to, to Dominique's point with the Logos example, think about how much more efficient we can be. Yeah. With technology. Mm-hmm. Think about how much we can cut on, cut down on so many costs and so many different things from a financial standpoint. If right. we just, you know, learn how to adapt and adopt these different things that can help us, not just in terms of being innovative, but just the efficiency level. Right. Me, me carrying 10 books versus me carrying one tablet with a thousand books. Right. You, you see what I mean? And right. like you said, it's the same content. The information hadn't changed. Right. It's just the delivery method that's the same. I think if we don't, we're going to be, we're going to be, uh, you know, blockbuster churches. Yeah. Right. In a Netflix, Ooh. In a Netflix Ooh. world. Ooh. That's Bruh. good. You know, that's just that's just what we are. We we have to adapt because those who adapt and those who that, those who change are those who not only survive, they also thrive in the midst of change. Yeah. yeah. We might just start looking at the Jetsons for some more ideas. <laughs> for real. For real, bro. For real. <laughs> do, do you guys think, do y'all think it's going to be, do you think? Hey, those, hey, hey, Pat. Yeah. Did I lose you? There you no, go. No. Up just a little bit. Go okay, ahead. I'm sorry. Hey, let me ask you guys, do, do y'all think those that don't adapt, I'm not going to say they're going to cease from existing, but do y'all think those that don't adapt, they're going to have a hard time really navigating when this is all over? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I do. I think it's going to be difficult. Here's the reality. The reality is that there are some people who are – ready to get back to church. Right. And there are some people who can take this virtual ministry piece and say, let's just keep doing this. Right. <laughs> you know I mean? Right. So in some regards, we're going to have to fight to get some people back to the physical location. If yeah. We, yeah. You know, yeah. There are some people who like sitting in the computer, you know, praising in their pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so it's going to challenge us to make sure that we use this opportunity, not just as a time for us to maintain how do we create more momentum and reach more people? Right. right. The gospel, I, I'm saying, I've been saying the gospel is going viral right. since this entire virus has taken place. Wow. More people are hearing the gospel online than any other time in history. Yeah. So we can't look at this as, okay, how does my church maintain during this time? No, how do we reach more people? Right, right. That's a question we need to be asking. And I think those, to Dominique, what Dominique just said, you know, if we if we don't become the Jetsons, what's the alternative? You know, the alternative is the Flintstones. Oh, man, Rev, <laughs> you just took the words out my mouth. Either it's the Jetsons or it's the Flintstones. It's the Jetsons or the Flintstones, bro. It's the Jetsons or the Flintstones. Yeah, man. And for those who are listening, we uh, us three going to write that book, so that's our intellectual property. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. right. Jetsons versus Flintstone ministry, all right? Yeah. Here's the thing, too. I think 
and this and everybody probably getting tired of hearing me say this. I said at home, I said in all my circles, like it's a both thing, right? Because you, you and, but definitely we have to go toward the future. And you also tell me, but yes, once all this is over, once God brings us out of this, both, you need both. We're going to still maximize the technology, but right. you need to have your face in the place too. Right. Because right. we're seeing the, we also now more people are seeing, I had a talk with a mentee the other day, and she she loves it. Like she 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 like wow, she might be one of the ones that be like, you know what? Y'all don't went live live all this time. Y'all need to find a way to keep doing it. But, yeah. but she also sees as a part of her growth. Yeah. While being in community, I mean face to face, being able to touch people is important as well. Yeah. Why is yeah. essential to her growth as a Christian. So yeah. I think it's both there. I think for me, it's letting me know, hey, I probably should have been, uh, you know, since we're speaking freely, I should have probably been sending out a voice thing or something like that to the people. Or, or, or did. It's pushed us to really go ahead and update some stuff. We had the capabilities. We were able to film. Right. It pushed us in some areas, and I like it for that aspect. But anytime I'm pushed, I know I'm growing. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that, man. I think, I think learning and hearing even the ideas of the things that you guys are doing is even pushing me. I'm, I'm on my phone right now, and I know I'm going to watch this again, but I'm on my phone right now typing in ideas of things that you guys are talking about, you know, because, yeah, this is a great opportunity for us to share the gospel and to spread the gospel. Because I don't know about y'all, like, I don't know if there's ever been a time where I'm getting a notification from preachers every five minutes they're going live. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I can't even keep oh, yeah. up no more, man. Yeah. I can't yeah. even keep up. Everybody, people I ain't never seen going live. I'm like, wait a minute, this joker going live? I ain't never yeah, seen it go live. And yeah. it's every, and it's every day and it's all day. It's constant. Yeah, it's, man. I think I think that's a great thing, man, because you know, we, we need more gospel presence online. We, uh, do. we have enough negativity, we got enough, you know, uh uh gloom and doom. Exactly. We need to hear the good news. And so, again, we don't need to use this as a time to say, well, how do we just keep up? How do we maintain? Uh, I, I want to go back to something that Dominique said and that you said also earlier, Pat, in terms yeah. of when we were talking about gleaning from one another. You know, mm -hmm. I've gotten ideas from different pastors during this time about implementing some, some different things that has really helped us to, if we think about it in these terms, not just survive, but how do we thrive in this right. time? Right, and 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 just having great relationships, man, with brothers like you all, and just different people who we've been able to connect with has really helped me. Because I'm I'm gonna be honest, man. You know, people have have, have kind of, as Dominique said, this whole innovation thing. But I gotta be honest, man. When this thing hit, it was initially, and I told Dominique, it's stressful. It was stressful for me. Yeah. And and still, in some regards, every week there's some different levels of stress and challenge that comes with this. Because even even those of us and, and, and both of you all are very creative minds is still having to process all of this is still knowing what tactic to use in what in what context, because every every strategy does not work in everybody's ministry context. Right. You know, it's, it's feeling hurt. And, 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 and now I don't want to say scared because I don't want to speak fear, but being very concerned about some churches who are not doing well in this time. Right. Right. You know, there's some churches in our community who, if we think about it, they're going to need our help financially. So we right. have to think of ways to say, hey, guys, I know everybody, you know, may be tight. It may be diff difficult for some people. But let's look at ways how we can pour into other churches, even from a financial standpoint, as this thing is going on, because everybody's not making it. Everybody's not having consistent mobile donations coming in. That's true. And so this is a time for the body of Christ to really be the body of Christ. And, and as Paul did in, in, in 2 Corinthians, when the Macedonian churches had to come together, to help the church in Jerusalem, we're yeah. going to have to do the same thing to help many of our churches that are, that are you know, struggling in this season. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah, that's, good. So, that's so true. And yeah, there, there are many churches that are struggling financially. I, uh, I went to play golf with um, um, one, of, one of my white um, preacher buddies here in town the other day. And he is a, um, he's a pastor at um, a major Baptist church in our area and um, have a large membership. And he was sharing that even here in the state of Florida, they reported that in just last month alone, all the 
all the churches in Florida and Southern Baptist, um, their their giving was down 60 percent. Ooh. Um, and so when you think about that, I mean, and I, my heart goes out to even like churches that just launched and churches that, you know, just started mortgages. Like they don't even have a track record with the bank, you know, just yet, you know, for those of us that have track records with the bank, whether it's five, 10, 15, whatever years. And we tell them, Hey, we need y'all to freeze our mortgage or whatever. You know, they're, they're, they're more apt to do it versus somebody that just started a mortgage last month that's right you know and so there there's different type of um situations that churches are in that's going to be tough for them and yeah there's churches that's going to need our help um you know I, I even say this i think out of this there might end up being churches which will be a good thing that might end up merging with other churches yeah um where talents and gifts and anointings and and abilities probably end up will have to come together, which will be a good thing. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to, um, you know, manage that journey. And, um, but yeah, we, um, even we, cause I hate, you know, I hated that the stay at home order came out the other day. We was doing something where we was doing the drive in church. We ordered like a big 24 foot screen and we was, you know, I was preaching inside the building. We were doing praise and worship inside the building. And it was phenomenal. The other day we had like 50, 55 cars outside. Mm. And, um, but then when the stay-at-home order, you know, came out yesterday, now we have to do everything online and people stay at home. And I'm good with that because I want to be a responsible pastor. You know, I don't want to put people's health and lives in jeopardy. Right. And I don't, I'm not going to jail and I'm not getting locked up and arrested talking about I'm, I'm being persecuted for Christ. No, I'm Amen. the law. Amen. Yeah, that's just breaking the law. They ain't got nothing to do with persecution. Yeah. <laughs> ain't hey. got nothing to do with persecution. Hey, 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 hey Pat. Yeah. Hey, Dominique, this, this Paul ain't going to jail. No, no. <laughs> we don't need you writing letters from I ain't writing letters. Jail. Yeah. If I go to jail, y'all better send me some letters. Exactly. Hey, exactly. You'll be talking like Paul. No one has done uh, has, has has first given to my ministry, but yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No one stood with me. Hey, hey, exactly. hey, hey, hey Pat. Real yeah. quick, I know we got a couple more questions you probably want to get to. I want to go back to what you were saying though about the um, the most of the pastors going live and all that right now, yeah. right? Yeah. And you never see it more like Paul, like like Paul said. I mean, you think about it. That's the gospel spreading. Right. Like even for us, I mean, we we're going to probably watch our because of the, the, the limit of time we have. You know, we're going to watch whoever our mentors or spiritual fathers were. We're going to watch theirs and a couple of other well-known preachers. But now, depends on how you feel. So you pre-record, or if you don't pre-record, right. and people say they get to visit everybody church now, right? Yeah, and they got the church hop. But yeah. here's the most, here's the thing that's very, I think, key for all of us that uh, is people that we can touch. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like it's not just, and, and you know, we all go to the conferences and everything. So I'm definitely not knocking that. But it's not just a larger mega church ministry, this and that. It's it's it's. Pat, who I grew up with. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's Paul. Okay. It's, it's neat from Good the point. east side. So it's people who I actually can touch, and they. Yeah. Oh man, I feel them on that. Yeah. That, that don't mean they're gonna leave their home church. Yeah. It's just now nah, okay, and 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 hopefully there's some continuity to what all of us are saying, even though it may be different. It's some niggas that, that, that that's leading in. Uh, now people need to get so okay, man. He said he said so. Okay, now the spirit is confirming some things. Yeah. Right? But I think the key to that is that you, I mean, I saw one pass, I told Paul, I said, man, hold on. He must have just skipped past the praise and worship and went straight to the preaching on it. He had about 12 churches he had visited. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. He listened to a whole yeah, lot of sermons today. Wow. And and I, I ain't knocking it. I just was like, yeah, he took his advantage, he took his advantage of the quarantine. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's a plus as well. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's guys that, we can touch it, we see it, and then we can, you know, we can say, hey, man, that was a great job right here. Right. Or even if you're close enough, you might say, hey, man, that was a great job. Maybe you should have hammered in on this point a little bit more. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. I, think, I think that's a good thing is too. So I, I want to leave that point of encouragement as well. Oh, you, you ran on it. I think, 
I'm going to say this, and I'm going to let you guys get out of here in just a minute. But I think you read on something, um, Nick, is that one of the things that when you're preaching live just to a camera, it, <laughs> it almost, it, you know, it, it forces you to be more genuine because yeah. you don't have the people in there to entertain. Yep. So, like, if, you, if you're talking to Pookie and Ray Ray them that's watching you, you know, you're not doing it with all the calisthenics of the organ playing behind you, the choir, you know, and all of the other stuff. You can you can talk genuinely, genuinely to that person that really needs the word and and like share your testimony. And they're more apt to hear you because you don't have all of that other extracurricular stuff to help your preaching out. You you're forced to be genuine. Oh, wow. yeah. Wow. I mean, you're, you're forced to be your authentic self yeah. and say, hey, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Joe Blow who I'm, I'm, I'm the same, you know, I'm the guy who went to East Side High School or West Side or whatever. And let me share with y'all your testimony. And you're not, I mean, because let's be honest, it's hard to hoop and holler while you just streaming. I mean, yeah. you, you, you can't do it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. So, so you, 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 have to be, you have to be your authentic self and really reach down, like what Jake says, into that core and really minister to those people that's out there and uh, be a blessing to you. Yeah, I, I think you're right on it, man. Yeah, I think, I think it's going to be a whole – I mean, it's so – like I say, we could do two, three of these segments. It's just going to be, like you say, a whole time of – Yeah, we got to do this again. Really getting it, – it really going to be a time of revelation that comes through during this time. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And I'm talking about where revelation to where you're going to have to take the time to break it down and and teach teach it to people. Right. right? Like I got a little happen the other day during my life, but you know everybody knows that in the day I'm not a hooper anyway. Like everybody right. knows I'm more of a treacher, Right. I teach right. treat. But but during this time, even those who are more celebratory, once again we don't knock those. Right. 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 Not at all. I, even though God was to get this revelation and really feed people, because I also think while we are encouraging the pastors uh, and while I do this, I do think as a, as a point of maturity that the saints are going to have to come to as well. Right. And it's going to be dispensing the revelation and not just the calisthenics, as you would say. Exactly. If, if in order for us to grow their hands, we got to have to, we got to give milk and meat. Right. And I think this is going to cause us to give to think about both. Like, like, like for me, it's making me really, even though I was already, you know, I, I'll talk to y'all, but even though I always, I try to think, think through my points, but right. now it's, it's making me dig a little bit more deeper because the crowd in the action would take you an extra 20. Yeah. With nobody yeah. in yeah. front of you, you ain't probably got the 10 or 15, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's exactly. a good point. You would think about it, if I'm getting revelation, uh, and this is to encourage your pastor, it's okay, like get it. Get it down, get it. So guess what? When you go out and you speak that, we're still honoring God. You and you're going to come back, possibly. And I, I speak it like this: You're going to come back with the more healthier, crit, uh, um, uh, let me not be, believer. Yeah, the more healthier believer if they've been tuning in and, and 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 watching with you and growing, and may even add some people who would never because they're going to be like, okay, that makes sense. I went hollered at, please, uh, or even it, 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 I, 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 it was understandable to me because yeah. now I under, I'm, I'm getting understanding on top of everything else. And I, I like a good hoop too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, you get what I'm saying? No, I yeah. want to make sure I definitely say that. Yeah. 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 Uh, let, let, me, let me ask y'all, I just got two questions I want to just end with y'all. Uh, first off. That's cool. Ideas for Easter. What y'all guys? What <laughs> ideas you got for Easter? I, I need to steal put, some ideas. I need them on the six cross. Ideas. Put them on the cross and get them up. <laughs> don't hey, don't forget it, don't forget his feet. Don't forget his feet. <laughs> <laughs> All of us need to bring a cross in while we, while we streaming, right? Yes, sir. Hey, put, oh, put them no. on there. I don't care how you do it. Put them on there and get them up. We got to um, get them up, man. You, you know, it's only so much you can do. Uh, you know, we're thinking of ways of how we can incorporate other people who are part of our church to send in videos 
if it's a video of a young person doing some type of presentation or that's good, some I like type that. of dance. Yeah, you know, you can edit, and y'all have people at your church. I know Patty yeah. even great at doing this himself, editing videos. Right. So, so part of it may be an opportunity for us to get people to send in different things that we have right. to package together. Okay. And, and make it a resurrection presentation. Uh, you know, again, um, I think it's just really about making sure that the gospel gets out and that while we have the world's attention, so to speak, that we use these innovative platforms. Uh, but I'm thinking, I'm still processing the way that I'm gonna do do ours for okay. uh, Easter Sunday, for Resurrection Sunday. Okay. But uh, And, and we'd love to talk to you guys offline about some stuff too, because again, um, I think it's very significant that while we're in this virtual context, that Jesus still is the centerpiece of everything that we're saying. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, for, so for us, um, how did I laugh? I was laughing because we, he started in Joshua before me. <laughs> and okay. I'm coming in, and, and we didn't even plan this. We talked about the end of the year. So I'm in the book of Joshua. I'm, I'm going to see if, if that gets changed just for uh, Resurrection Sunday. If not, I, I always preach, you know, preach Jesus, you know, right. live, died, buried, raised. In, um, anyway, but I think what we're going to do, I'm not going to have my communion service this Sunday. So right. something I think I can add to this conversation is we'll do it on Easter. And so one of the things we're thinking about doing is package, packaging it in Ziploc bags, the little uh, juice with the crack on right. top, right. right? Packaging it and, and telling the people they can come by the church to pick it up. So at the end of worship, worship during the, the live, we can take communion together. Okay. Or I might say, hey, you know the first, it was really an agape meal. I need you to go in there and get you some Welsh's great and some right. and some grits. Right. And, and I'm, not, right. I'm not trying to be sacrilegious. Oh, but, no, but, but right now, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about, because even for some people with the traditional mindset, but I also, you know, I'm trying to meet both or do a both thing as usual. As I always say, I probably would do that, have them come by and, and come by and get their community cooked the communion ziplock. Because I also think what I'm looking at it would do is add to, okay, still the, um, either way it goes, we know it's a time of, to honor Christ. Right. But I think that also kind of adds to it, like I'm going to part, to go get, to partake of the elements. Right. Particularly with, with we don't know how stuff going to be going with, because um, we got to stay on to whatever they call it. Right. Um, you know, the, the shelves may be empty, so they may not be able to get juice and crackers. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. So I think if we provide that they come, they get it. If you got a family of four, we give you four, we, we got the four things in the packet. Right. You know, and so I, that that's the only unique, unique thing I'm thinking about doing right now. I do like Paul's idea about the editing. I just have to see if we even we have the time to even, you know, uh, pull that off with as some of my people are still working and some not. So that's 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 it for me. What you thinking about doing? Uh, well, I just got about twenty ideas from y'all just now, so I'm I'm still in y'all some of y'all ideas. Uh, I I think well, one of the things that we are doing, I asked every member to send in two videos that we're going to oh. celebrate the message. I ha I asked them to record themselves just saying he is risen. Um, mm. It would be like just two or three seconds. So if I get you know, 100, 120 people to do that, you know, that will be about a three or four minute video or, or I can just, you know, we're going to put together a video. It might be, it might just be 80 of them that'll do it. So yeah. I'm just having saying he is risen, he is risen. And then there's going to be another video we're going to create that where I ask all the members to say, what does Easter mean to them? Mm. You know, it might get played during the service. It might get played after the service, but it'll be a part of our Easter presentation some kind of way maybe before or after or maybe a intro video or something um and then one other thing that i'll probably do is take like some old easter services yeah you know like we had i'm sure like y'all you probably had maybe some of your liturgical dancers or you had a solo or something that you know god's hand was on that moment in that easter service yeah, i got you I'm going to go and I'm going to have them to download it and put that a part of the presentation too as well. Because like that. Cause we all know a, anointing has no time date on it. That's right. If it was anointed back in 2005, 
it's going to be annoying or not. And you might have somebody in your church, you probably could find a video five or six years ago from Easter, a presentation that was done. You might have somebody in your church now that didn't even see that. Mm -hmm. And it can bless them and it can bless them today. So I'm probably going to do that. Take a, maybe one solo that was done on Easter a couple of years ago, and maybe a, a dance presentation, put that in there and probably just teach for about 15, 20 minutes. Cause we all know it's, it's hard to keep people's um, attention span while you're doing it online. So I want to try to condense as much as I can in that time. Yeah. But, mm. uh, but I, but I, I'm definitely, I'm, I, I'm definitely going to do the communion thing. Like you say, cause yeah, ours, our communion is usually the first Sunday, Yeah. but I love the idea of, of having it next Sunday. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. I yeah. think, I think I'm going to do that too. I'm just trying to, how are you going to get it to all your members? How are you going to make sure they all get it? If you're going to. Hey, I'm going to, see, it, it really is going to depend, because it just came down for us, Pat, this, okay. um, this, this, um, it, it, the governor here just said, just did it, right? He just put the stay at home. So that's right. good. So literally, Depends on how how real strict this thing is, because I don't want to get them out of trouble. Literally, if they come by, we just gonna get to them. They keep riding. Right, right. Like you ain't gotta congregate. Right. Hey, we gonna. Matter of fact, you may you may call. We got that, that's good. We gotta come up with a system. So let yeah. me just be that instead of pulling something out right now. We gotta come up with a system. So you may call and say, Hey, um, are you my family? The Johnsons need four. Right. So okay, you coming by? We got so we know how many packs. When you come by, here you go. God bless you. We'll see you. On, we'll see you on the live Sunday, and that way you just keep going. Right. Right. So right. yeah, that that's the way I'm thinking about doing it right now. Okay. Okay. I like I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah that way you're not congregating. I right. Think you're literally out. You getting your stuff and you going back in. Right. I love that. I love that. I love that. Uh, well, let me close with this question, guys. What do y'all think God is saying in all of this? What is God Ooh. saying? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I know we, we'll need a whole other deal on that. We'll need a whole other Zoom on that. But what do y'all think God is saying, though, man? I'm going to say it back. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, Paul, you go ahead, man. You, you go ahead and get us on base. Lord Jesus. <laughs> go ahead and hit the home run. I'm going to tell you, this is, my, this, is my, this is my personal perspective. I think God is teaching us how to be still, okay. um, how to get back to some basic things like family and like rest um, and, and community. And then on the other spectrum, I think it's about God teaching us how to stretch and how to be flexible. Mm -hmm. So I see both. I see God showing us in one regard from a personal sanctification standpoint that we got to learn how to be still Mm -hmm. uh, people feeling like being at home, like they're in jail. They just ready to give up. <laughs> you right, know what I mean? Right, right. Because we don't know how to wrestle with just not doing so much. Right. And so undoing all of our busy, you know, schedules. And I think it's, it's God getting our attention and saying, be still, uh, know that I'm God, learn how to get back in my presence. And even after all of this is over, don't lose the consistency of being still and being in God's presence. Right. You know, and then from the ministry pastoral leadership standpoint, uh, let's continue to be innovative and let's continue to get the gospel online the way we're doing it now. And, yes, yeah. and let's use this as an opportunity to learn some new skills so that we can be more effective and more efficient at preaching and, and, and reaching others with the gospel. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, for, for, for me to add to that, because I definitely agree with the, Let's be still. Let's get back to basic. I literally just uh, preached this message. And I, you know, I'm careful about saying it. I think it's a national message and all that. But I do think it's a timely word because it was for me uh, as well. And I ministered and my people really reacted to it. And it's that he truly is the way maker. I know that's a song that's yeah. popular. And so when I'm, when I'm saying about that is I think we're in a transition period, change and transition period, like yeah. the wilderness. And I think there's a difference between change and transition. Change is what happens externally. Transition is what happens internally with me, my emotions and everything. Right. And um, and I share this as I was coming. I was reading. You know, it, it has even taken me back to the simplicity 
um, like Paul is reading through the Psalms through a book, but like for me, personally, what God had told me to do is just start picking up reading the Bible for my own personal devotion because I read so much anyway. And so I'm reading through this like Mark. And in Mark 2, what, happened, what Mark 1, it showed me, well, you know, when Jesus gets through, baptized, get through getting baptized, uh, he's led through the wilderness. And it said that God, God sent ministering angels to him in the wilderness. Right. Among right. The wild beasts. So I was able to parallel that with Israel being in the wilderness. Right. And then, and so what happens is it's showing us that we don't deal with uncertainty well at all, even though we say we believe in a God who's a rock. Right. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And definitely. so in that meantime, it's saying, look, when you're going through this period, we don't know, let's say, if you're thinking about it, we really don't know how long. Yeah. In Western Christianity, we, we're so didactic, boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And we're not used to dealing with the tension, whereas like a lot of our Eastern brothers, they are. Yeah. All right. They kind of deal with the mystery of God. So they, they, some of them, I'm not saying like everybody just, ooh, I can deal with it. Right, but, right. So they can deal with this, it's just a mystery. So they okay with the mystery. And so I think during this time, uh, that to add with the be still is also that I am truly your source. Right. I am truly your, your, your provision. Right. And you, you have, nobody has the answers for you right now. Right. So you got to come to me. Right. Because you've been depending on everything else. You've right. been depending on your favorite preacher. You've been depending on um, your 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 favorite commentary. Right now, you're going to have to go get come get this manna every day. Right. Wow. So I think that's what it is. So the four things, I, and I'll let you go. It's not a preacher moment, but this is what he said. Look, I provide direction and protection, and I provide mm -hmm. pres uh, pr preservation. Because he mm -hmm. said in Deuteronomy 8, I kept you. So I'm going to let you know I am your keeper right. as you walk through this wilderness. And he mentors us during this time. He mentors as far as and coaches us. But he said, I discipline you as a father. Right. And so I think those are the things. And so if you look at it, you know, he's letting us know I'm your protection, I'm your provider, and I'm your God. Right. That's right on it. That's yeah, right man. on That's it, man. Yeah. That's right on it. You know, I, I agree with you guys. I think – you know, just to reiterate what you guys say, I feel like God is, uh, he's kind of removed a lot of the obstacles, a lot of the idols to where we have no choice but to concentrate on him and to connect with him. I mean, around this time, we'll be watching NBA finals and arguing about <laughs> if LeBron is better than Michael Jordan. You, you got a good point, yeah. You know, uh, we, we ain't even been able to have that argument right now, you know. Yeah. We'll, We'll be watching Major League Baseball or for those that watch NHL, the National League Hockey, you know, whatever. Uh, but we don't even have those distractions. It's almost like God has removed all the distractions to where we have no choice. Man, this is prophetic. Guys, this is prophetic. Okay, we said we wanted 2020 vision, right? Maybe God has removed all the things that distracted us from concentrating on him and seeing him clearly. So we have no choice but to see him clearly. Watch your voice, Reverend. Oh, Reverend. <laughs> Watch your oh, voice, Reverend. Reverend. <laughs> yes, sir. This thing hit me, you know, because I've been wondering since all this <laughs> stuff happened. I'm like, wait a minute. Everybody was prophesying 2020 vision and clear vision. Okay, maybe all of this is happening for God to give us clear vision. Yes, sir. I'm trying not to go in with you now. I'm Reverend, trying not to go in with don't you. Don't make me pull out my hoop triggers <laughs> and, 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 and hit E flat on here. Don't make hey, me do man. it. That's and, powerful, and here's, bro. Here's the thing, though, uh, Pat. I'm trying not to tag team so bad. But Go ahead. If you look at it, though, you think about it. We've been coming up, making up vision. Right. Not knowing that the vision is revealed in us. Right. Yeah. So we live out his, his vision. Our vision should be nothing but God dreaming through us. And so... It, <laughs> <laughs> and so instead of us going on making up this man-made stuff, he's going to download it in us. Like you say, so now I want to give you my vision. I want to give you the true vision. Yeah. Right. For really what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, don't start the hoop trigger, man. man don't, don't, don't make me pull out hoop triggers again, Reb. Don't make me, don't make me open it. No. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That was oh, good, though. Lord. That 2020, you're right. I think you're powerful, right, man. That is powerful. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, that's what God 
I think is doing is he's taking away all the obstacles, all the things that didn't allow us to see him clearly. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to work on that, man. I feel like God's saying something to me on that end. Yeah. So, uh, but, but listen, man, uh, guys, I appreciate this time, man. We're going to have to do this again the next couple of weeks. We, we need to have a post-Easter Zoom. Let's do that. Let's do it, man. Yeah, let's have a post-Easter Zoom. If you guys, maybe even if you guys know a couple other guys that would love to join in with us, you know, that have like-minded spirits, I love to do that. And, um, you know, by that time, I have the whole Facebook Live thing cleared up. We'll, we'll be able to have that straightened out. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a post this on, on Facebook. I'm going to put it on there, and you guys will be able to share it off there too as well. Um, I'll upload the recording. But, uh, listen, I, I, I love you guys. I appreciate you praying for your ministries, praying for your families. And, uh, hey, listen, Dominique, can you close us out with prayer, man? And um, Sure. If you guys got anything you want to share even before we close, feel free to do it. You got some problem? Yeah. We appreciate you, man. We love you as well, Pat. Appreciate you for putting this together. Appreciate it. Dominique, close us out with prayer, man. Father, we thank you for the day, and we thank you for still being God, even in the midst of a walk through the wilderness. I thank you for each one of these men and their ministries. I thank you for every pastor and leader right now. I thank you just for all the saints, Lord God. And we ask that we keep our eyes on you during this time, God. Yes. And God, um, give us peace, God. There's a, there's a lot of fear and anxiety in the world right now, Father. And we just ask that you, the God of our peace, Lord yes. God, come in and settle us, that gives us a peace that surpasses our understanding. That everybody right now, God, eat during this time. What I mean by that, Lord God, let us have all things in common so there'll be no need amongst us, God. Lord, yes. that, give us a sharing spirit, a spirit of generosity, yes. God, right yes. now. And, and then we speak it and we decree it and then we yes. declare, God, yes, that we will come out of this thing better than when we went in, God. But you see, there's a land that is flowing with milk and honey, God. Yes. And my our spirit will be strong and our relationships with you, number one, will be strong and with our families and with our communities. Yes, in your Lord, son, Lord. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, love you hey, guys, man. Hey, don't y'all tell the people to fill out the senses. Yeah, definitely. We'll do that, man. Hey, love you guys. Take care, man. We'll holler at you. All right, you bro. too, bro. All right, peace, peace out.